Today I'm going to talk about computers and their importance in aviation, and how the use of computers, even in really small UAVs, is changing the course of aviation history. When we talk about computers, we think of a desktop, a laptop, a tablet, or even a smartphone. But if we have to define a computer, well, a computer is a machine that can be programmed to carry out sequences of arithmetic or logical operations automatically. So even things that don't look like a computer may have one inside them, like the microwave oven, an audio recorder, the main engine control system of your car, or this Arduino-based development board. Of course, this board is not capable of playing back a video from a web browser or run a 3D video game in it, because it's not made for that, but it can process a lot of information and do automated tasks, and you can program it for it and to do many things. Nowadays, we have this. Similar size, but the difference is that this is actually a computer, a whole computer, so you can actually play back a video from a web browser, run video games in it, and you can almost do anything you want, just like in a big computer. This is the Raspberry Pi 4. It has a nice processor, quad-core Cortex-A72 running at 1.5 GHz, and it has 8 GB of RAM. You can connect it to up to two monitors, 4K, and it has other capabilities like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPIO ports, and so on. There are many others in the market like this one, but this happens to be the most popular one, and it runs a distribution of Linux operating system. So having a lightweight and powerful computer like this make it perfect for projects where you need a lot of processing power, but an ultra lightweight hardware. And of course, we're talking about small robots, model planes, and things like that. But we also have these very small computers here that we call microcontrollers, like the Arduino-based boards, which uses microchips. In the case of the popular Arduino Uno, it has the Atmega 328P, and it is a simple but very good chip. It can perform simple tasks better, more efficiently, and faster than a big computer. That's why we still need to use a fly controller that uses microcontrollers in it. These microcontrollers are programmed to read sensors and output signals to control the motors or move control surfaces and other parts of the aircraft. But we can still use a companion computer to process more complicated data like images from a camera running an AI recognition software or something like that, or machine learning. It can also be programmed to perform tasks based on GPS locations and do, you know, run many other kind of sensors that doesn't require a very fast response from a microcontroller like this one. And if you know how to program these computers, well, you can do anything you want, actually, because these computers are very powerful. We can make the companion computer and the flight controller communicate between each other and make autonomous decisions. Right now, in 2021, we have many tools available to the public for very low cost, something that about a decade ago was very expensive and only available for military, or were proprietary systems to be used only by big companies. In general, aviation fly-by-wire is the most common example of the use of computers. A fly-by-wire system uses computers to take electronic signals from the input commands by the pilot and performs calculations on how it should move the different control surfaces and how much power should be applied to the engines. That way, it makes a safe and efficient maneuver. This makes the control of the aircraft easier for the pilot, safer, and much more efficient. But the software has to be written right in order for these systems to work correctly. Otherwise, something can go terribly wrong, like the Boeing 737 MAX case in 2019. It had two accidents killing hundreds of people and grounding the whole fleet because of a small change in the software. The whole story is a bit more complicated than that, but the point is that a mistake in the programming of these computers can lead to fatal results. Now imagine integrating artificial intelligence to these computers to assist pilots or even to completely or partially replace them. Certainly, accidents like this could have been avoided or even letting an artificial intelligence to write the code for these computers would have avoided these problems from the, from the beginning. But this is something more for the future that we can discuss in another video. 
For now, let's focus on the drone technology of the current times. I'm talking about flight controllers like this, or like this, or even this is also a flight controller. Hell, you can use even a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino Uno as a flight controller by adding the right sensors needed for it. If you're an advanced user, you can even make your own board design. Sometimes I design my own circuit boards to fit specific needs, like the LED strobe flasher for airplanes, which is a very simple example, or an experiment I was doing called Joy Chip using an Atine 85. These flight controllers can be very cheap and they're perfect for the task of flight stabilization. And you can integrate other sensors and modules like a GPS, a compass, altimeter, and much more to make it autonomous, fly missions, and do more interesting stuff. But that's just the hardware. We need the software to complete it. There are plenty of open source software out there for these drones, and one of the most prominent ones is ArduPilot for mission planning and automation, and also many drone configurations. And by drones, I mean any unmanned vehicle, like a boat, a rover, multicopter, a plane, a submarine, or even a combination of a plane with a multicopter. I think there is no limit for what you can do and what you can automate with ArduPilot. Then we have iNav, which is easier to use, but also includes many features used in ArduPilot. iNav is focused more in UAVs, so I don't think we can use it in surface drones like rovers or boats. Then we have the most popular ones in drone racing, like Betaflight and all of the others, which are very similar. And these are very popular for racing drones. Multi-rotor drones rely heavily on these flight controllers to maintain stability and fly. Without one, it will be nearly impossible to fly them. On the other hand, we have fixed-wing aircraft that can be flown manually without a flight controller because it's a different nature, but a flight controller can make it a lot easier to fly them because it will add a stabilization property. A flight controller, as any other computer, will make computations really fast, thousands of times per second, and they can react much faster than a human. In a near future, completely autonomous drones with artificial intelligence integrated in them will overcome the capabilities of human pilots. But we're still in the early stages of UAVs combined with artificial intelligence. So for that to happen will be more years. I don't know exactly how many years, but it will happen soon. It's happening already with electric cars like the Tesla cars that are being driven by themselves. They don't need um, a driver anymore. Of course, still there is a transition, so many people will prefer to drive their own cars, but it's happening. And finally, I'm going to mention redundancy. The use of redundancy systems is very important. For commercial aircraft, the fly-by-wire system uses multiple computers which constantly monitor the system and if one of them fails, then another computer will take over. In UAVs with more serious applications, we can find this redundancy feature. For example, in Arduino Pilot, we can set up several compasses and sensors to get an accurate reading, increasing safety and reliability. The topic of computers used in flying machines is very extended. I just scratched the surface in this video. So thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.